Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel. We're here in Gresham at Metro East Community Media. Glad you joined us tonight. We're going to have a good show. We're going to start out um, kind of a, a somber subject, and uh, but there's something that we all need to find out about. We're going to be talking with OASIS. It's Oregon Abuse Advocates and Survivors in Service. I did look this time, but <laughs> that's a mouthful. It and is. with us to represent Oasis, we have Tara Lawrence, who is an attorney, volunteer with Oasis. Thanks for being here again, Tara. Thank you, Monica. And Clarissa Oh, you are the executive director. I am. Yeah, thanks for being here. Thank you for having us. Oh, it's my pleasure. You, um, obviously, the sex trafficking and sex abuse and all that kind of thing has been in the news a lot lately. Mm -hmm. It's been a really big deal, and we keep hearing about how this I-5 corridor area is a really... Um, a really central uh, mm -hmm. location for mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of issues. How um, how is Oasis dealing with this, and, and why was this organization formed? What what was the impetus to get this going? Yes, um, I have a couple different thoughts on that one. But we started. We're a fairly new organization. Mm -hmm. We started in 2009. Okay. And there was a bill in the legislature that was looking at extending the civil statute of limitations for survivors of child sexual abuse. Of, of reporting it? Or, I mean, or of taking it to court? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. On the civil side. Uh -huh. And there was some opposition to that bill pretty immediately. And some survivors and allies and a few professionals really heard about that and said we need to shift this. We need to at least tell our story yeah. and why this is important. And during that process, this group of about a dozen people got together and shared their stories of child sexual abuse, mostly survivors who were sharing their own story. And in the midst of this legislation, what happened was that legislation passed. And it was a bit of a David and Goliath story, big, legis <laughs> big yeah, money yeah. and other survivors who were telling their stories, and something shifted. And so at the end, when we saw that, wow, Oregon has really moved to um, a more progressive side, looking at mm -hmm. um, civil statute of limitations, why stop here? We weren't stepping on anyone's toes to do that work, right. to advocate for more rights for survivors of child sexual abuse. Right. And so we started this organization, OASIS. And really, OASIS is an advocacy group made up primarily of survivors, as well as with allies of survivors of child sexual abuse and professionals who are looking at shifting the culture around child sexual abuse here in Oregon. And we're doing that through advocacy, so for changing laws and looking at public policy, and as well as just talking about child sexual abuse, educating people about it, that this impacts so, so your so your um, your focus is educating and advocating and and working within the you know trying to change laws if they Absolutely. need to be changed that kind of thing mm -hmm. and then also support for the survivors it, it, or is it a, like a support group part of it or you not? know that's a great question it is um, we don't consider ourselves a direct service organization in the ways that we are um, it provide counseling for um, survivors but what we found is. Child sexual abuse, survivors often feel alienated and isolated and experience shame about the abuse they had. Mm -hmm. When they come together and when they're telling their stories and working together to change policy and to change the, the landscape for other children, mm -hmm. it's a therapeutic process where survivors yeah. feel much stronger, much healthier. Very empowering. And very empowering. Think, yes. So in, we don't provide um, traditional support groups, uh -huh. but we do provide avenues for survivors to become empowered and work with us to change Oregon. That's actually pretty cool because they're actually doing something. It's not just talking about it, they're actually doing something to change it for the future so that, you know, yeah. and for all those others, because I'm sure anybody who has been a victim of sexual abuse doesn't want to see anybody else have to go through that. Right. I think that's an impetus and a motivation for a lot of yeah. survivors in yeah. this group is that they. No one protected them, but they want to protect someone else. Wow, that'd be, that'd be a, a really difficult, a difficult place to be. Um, Tara, what are you what are you doing as a, as an attorney? What do you do for for uh, Oasis? Well, I've been a victims advocate for twenty years, okay. and have always been interested in helping support victims. Like I said, for years, and I know that as a former district attorney and now as a civil attorney, it's so important to provide assistance and support, not only through the legal system, mm -hmm. but also provide resources and information to individuals that really are not interested in litigation. And mm -hmm. organizations like Oasis do exactly that. So it seemed like a good good fit and a good partnership 
I'm interested in really helping Oasis as we head off into Salem at different times and continue to work on improving the laws that affect survivors of child abuse. Nice. I understand that Oasis has actually done rather well lately. You've gotten some big grants and you've mm -hmm. gotten uh, an award. You got an award, is that right? I did. Tell me about the award you got. Um, uh, I guess that was almost uh, not that long ago. I received the Glory Award, which is from Gloria Steinem, and she. Wow. I got to go out to New York and she presented You got to meet her and mm -hmm. you actually got to mm -hmm. nice. That's yes. pretty impressive. It was. Nice it was quite wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank That's you. pretty exciting. And in addition to that, which is actually even more exciting, is the Ms. Foundation for Women, which mm -hmm. is the foundation that Gloria Steinem has um, founded years ago. Ms. Magazine. Remember yes, that person? yes, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, they are very committed to the movement um, to end child sexual abuse. And they have invested in about 20 organizations across the country um, who are working to end child sexual abuse. And Oasis is one of those groups. Yes. And because of them, we have the funds and the connection to do this performance that we're talking about today. Nice. Oh, that's great. So that was a huge, huge benefit, it wasn't is. it? It is. It is. How are you normally funded? How is Oasis funded? As a nonprofit, we're funded by grants and then by individuals Individual who donations. are giving donations. Wow. Mm -hmm. So people, especially people that maybe have done all right for themselves and have maybe gone through that, that you know, that would be a... Absolutely. Um, a great way to, to yes. try to pay, you know, help it so other people not have to go through that because that's a really, that's a big deal. For sure. It is. And here's what we know. We know that one out of four girls are affected by child sex abuse and one out of six boys are affected by that's child sex abuse. That's an incredibly abuse. high figure. Yeah. So someone knows someone directly or indirectly directly that's a survivor of yeah. child oh, abuse. Yeah. And people don't always, well, most people probably don't even report it anyway, do they? That's I mean, correct. I imagine that's, that's pretty correct. high mm -hmm. figure. Mm -hmm. So you don't really know if those figures are, that's are low or, or mm -hmm. high or what. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, yeah, because it's a shameful thing to people, right? I mean, that's what I understand, and that the victims are often made to feel um, like it's their fault. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Now, I use the word victim, but you use the word survivor. Tell me what the difference is between a victim and a survivor. Okay, do you want to go on that one? Well, what I would say that a victim probably, I think if you are, if you've been wronged or harmed and you are a victim of a crime, mm -hmm. I think for me, uh, and this is my definition, I don't know if this would be the Oasis definition, but my definition, a victim becomes a survivor when they start on that path to healing mm. and healing and becoming a survivor can mean di many different things to different people. It might mean volunteering and helping others. It might mean beginning to journal. It might mean beginning to break bad habits such as coping mechanisms like drinking or mm -hmm. alcohol, mm -hmm. which often are used to numb emotional pain. Sure. Yeah. It might be an aggressive stance about speaking out, actually. It might be just telling. <laughs> it might yeah, be yeah. just telling, yeah. mm -hmm. which might yeah. be just telling. Yeah. So it's different things to different yeah. people. I, I think that's exactly yeah. right. But the yeah. survivors are the ones that are mm -hmm. kind of moving on and, and, you know, heading toward some a little bit of peace, maybe. Yeah, I yeah. think we typically use the word survivor rather than victim. It's um, a more positive. It's a more yeah. positive yeah. word. Yeah. It it has a more empowered sense. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's hopeful. It it is. It's hopeful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because mm -hmm. victim is not a hopeful word. It's not. Victim is used in the criminal justice system, and then also in the civil system. But mm -hmm. outside of that, in the advocacy groups, which is good, we we do use survivor, which yeah. is so much more optimistic. Do you do um, much in the way of education, and and if so, who who do you educate about this? I mean, obviously mm -hmm. you're doing that right here, but mm -hmm. where else would you be educating people about the? So, um, so we have a Survivor Speakers Bureau. So we have survivors um, who are part of Oasis who go out and share their stories and as well invite people to participate in our work mm -hmm. and share ways that people can detect child sexual abuse and ways they can protect it and ways they can heal from it. And they go out to places that want them. So that's sometimes universities in human sexuality classes. Mm -hmm. That's sometimes churches. Um, schools we also have gone and um, we've gone to some of the uh, the nonprofit organizations that work with children mm -hmm. because it's very helpful for them to hear for parents to hear yeah. and for even um, employees to hear how this impacts directly um, from a survivor that mm -hmm. that perspective I think can be very helpful for people 
Um, we also are just um, are in the process of working with an organization in Pennsylvania and we have partnered with them in a program called Safe Church. So we're out working with churches, helping them become safe sanctuaries. Mm, um, that's good. For survivors. Yeah. Well, and for a, children. A church is supposed to be a safe place. A school is supposed to be a safe place. Mm -hmm. Your sports team is supposed yes. to be a safe place. All these places that aren't always safe. And, and isn't it usually the people that the, the children know, yes, that they trust? Right. That, I mean, more often than not. It's such a misnomer that stranger danger is what we need to be worried about because 97%, the figures might be a little bit give or take, are um, of the abuses that is um, done by people That's who really the family or the child trust. Because you know, I remember, you know, when my kids were young, when I was young, you know, the parents always say, you know, don't talk to strangers. You know, yes. you don't know that person. Don't talk to strangers. But if it's somebody you know, you don't really think about it. You, right. don't, you know, it doesn't occur to you that perhaps, you know, this this uh, very friendly relative or neighbor or whatever. You know, it could be a predator, it could be, you know, hurting your child. Right. And it's heartbreaking. So how do, do you work with parents to, and to help them know what to look for? We do. Or in we other, do. you know, first responders and that mm -hmm. kind of thing? Our work is, um, though we do some of that work, it's less of our primary work. Mm -hmm. um, but, for example, we work with Darkness to Light, which is a wonderful program that even some of Oasis people are um, teachers of or facilitators of. Is that a nonprofit and organization? Or it, is that yes, a, yeah. it is. It's oh, a okay. national program. Um, and they really do talk about what the specific things to look at are and ways to be very specific about protecting your children, which would include being familiar with the grooming process. That's a big piece. Is seeing oh, what do you mean by that? The grooming process. So often um, a perpetrator or someone who abuses a child doesn't do it without quite a bit of work done beforehand, earning the trust of the child, earning, weighing, work. The, yes, um, weaving themselves into the family and mm -hmm. and doing things to help. It might start with real basic secrets. So seeing, is the, will the child keep a silly secret that has really no weight, but if they can see they can get that secret safe, then then more dangerous secrets can wow. ensue. So there's, there's different things that in the grooming process that, that parents can um, learn about so that they can detect that to so see if there's when you say else. grooming, they're basically grooming them to be a victim? Yes, Is that what that's, that's yeah. exactly okay. right. Grooming them to be a victim and grooming their guardians to allow it to happen. Or wow. allow is not to, the right word. Um, grooming the, um, the guardians to not be able to see it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So I can imagine that the um, anger and the guilt of a parent that finds out that somebody that they trusted and loved has been abusing their child. Yes. That would be a really, really horrible thing. And to think, oh, I didn't see that. Yes, I think, of, yeah. I think it's profound. And I think um, some of our um, fiercest and most big-hearted advocates in Oasis are parents who... Who, um, who were on that end of yes. it. Yes. Yeah, that would be... Um, I, I, I just can't even imagine, you know, having to deal with that and just thinking, oh my God, I allowed this to happen to my, you know, to my child. Right. But it's, they're, but like you said, they're, they're grooming you too. Yes. And yes. they groom the, really a community. If you look at the Sandusky case in Penn uh, State, yes. I mean, you really look at what yeah. a powerful individual. He was a big strapping football mm -hmm. star coach. Right. And for him to have been able to ingratiate himself, not only among the kids and the parents Absolutely. of the kids, but the establishment as well. Right. So and, then, and, and people and then people covered for him. And, and then was, they covered like, for him. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Okay, now you you mentioned the the play telling mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that is um, that you got the grant so you can mm -hmm. put this on. So tell me how this all fits in. Tell me about the play. So the play is going to feature seven survivors of child sex abuse. The survivors are from the Pacific Northwest. Are they actually playing the parts in it? They are they're, actual they're survivors. They're each going to tell their stories. They're going to uh -huh. give a narrative story. Okay. Margie. Boulay, Margie Boulay, yes. yes, the playwright, is going to weave their stories in with a number of different forms of art. She's going to weave in some music, some dance, oh, okay. some poetry, so that they can tell their stories in a manner that flows. Mm. She's so skillful at what she's done. She's going to be balancing these tragic, heart-wrenching stories with just the right touch of humor when it's needed, oh, just, wow. just exactly at the right moments, because this is such heavy subject matter yeah, yeah. and it certainly does make your heart ache 
yeah. at moments, you also need that moment of relief, and it's going to come in yes. some laughter. Yes, that's good. That's good. Otherwise, you'd be exhausted by the yeah, time. You, you may would. be exhausted anyway, yeah. but you yeah. would. For, for those who don't know Margie E. Belay, I mean, she was a writer for The Oregonian for years. I used mm -hmm. to read her. I just I just loved her. I just thought she was a great writer and, yes. and a wonderful singer, mm -hmm. yes. actress, mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. and playwright, and, and author, and yeah, right. she, just, she kind of does it all. Yes. But, um, yeah, so that'll be great. So our seven survivors, mm -hmm. and one of their goals with participating in this play is that they want to be, they want to be a source of empowerment, encouragement, mm -hmm. and they're determined to help see and transform as many victims into their status of survivors. That's great. Yeah. So, um, so the, the survivors tell their story, and, mm -hmm. and and it's just, it's a full, what is it, like, a, how long is it? 90 minutes. 90 okay. minutes. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be at the Interstate Firehouse? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. I have never been to a play there. I, don't, I can't believe I've never been there. I actually don't live very far from mm -hmm. there. But, yeah, it's supposed to be a great venue for... I think so. Uh, so that'll It'll be good. Feel. Now, th it's going to be taking place, um, I think we'll have, we'll have, yeah, we'll have that on the screen. But um, Friday and Saturday, May, that's May 9th and 10th? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then and Friday and Saturday, the 16th and 17th, correct? Yes, and then a Those matinee. Those are all 7.30 p.m. And then mm -hmm. a matinee on Sunday, the 18th. Yeah. yeah. I think, uh, Monica, one of the real um, motivations of this play is that child sexual abuse thrives and is enshrouded in, in, in secrecy and in shame. Mm -hmm. And so one, we see a part of preventing child sexual abuse is addressing the silence and shame that surrounds it. And so telling, which is our performance, is about breaking that silence and breaking the shame. So it's seven survivors who have owned their own story. Mm -hmm. So no longer does it need to own them. Right. And they're sharing that in a way that um, is hopeful and empowering and real. So it's, it doesn't dismiss the profound impact that child sexual abuse has. We know right. that it has tremendous impact on a person's life. And <laughs> there also is fuller life that can happen, and these people are going to tell us about that. I imagine it would be very liberating to be able to, to, to be able to finally get that off your chest and tell and have people believe you. Because yes, sometimes that's that doesn't right. happen. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It would be very liberating, and, and for them to be able to um, share that, I would think it would just be as good for them as it was for the people that mm -hmm. are hearing it. I think yeah. so. Yeah. I think so. But um, we only have a couple more minutes left, so tell me, what, what are some of the things that happen to people when they suffer through sexual abuse as a child? What kind of repercussions are there? Yes, yeah, so there's correlations to many things, correlations to higher rates of suicide, Tara had mentioned addiction or uh, alcohol, alcohol, I think is what she mentioned. Yeah. Um, uh, another thing that we see is repeated cycles of abuse. So mm -hmm. some survivors will even say, was there an X on my head? Um, because they because, end up, because they end up that, that other people, um, that often one experience of abuse happens more often. It, it's, it does, it's not an isolated event. Um, it can be, but often it's not. Yeah. Um, so isolation also we see. Um, depression, some, some survivors will over um, um, perform. So uh -huh. you'll see survivors, and, and you'll see this represented in the um, performance as well, that some you'll see Great really have this perfect outside, yeah. but really feeling incredibly lonely mm -hmm. and empty um, internally. And then you'll see some people who also just kind of step out and um, give up. And so you'll see kind of that spectrum. That sounds fascinating. It sounds fascinating. Have you seen it? Have you seen it? I have not yet seen a rehearsal. No, but I'm excited. You've read the, you both mm -hmm. read the, the uh, I've script. read, yes, yeah. yeah. One more thing that I was going to say, Monica, that really is reflected in both the criminal and the civil statutes is the really the delayed recognition. Mm -hmm. The recognition is often delayed and rep repressed. People have heard of repressed memories. Mm -hmm. But for sex abuse victims or survivors, really, probably the state where they're victims, they really do not quite adequately, adequately connect up with all the harm and mm -hmm. damage that's in their life to the abuse because of all of the shame Right. And the secrecy, well, they, they take so much blame too. onto themselves yeah. that they really are not seeing an accurate. They don't really see themselves as the child and the innocent one. They mm -hmm. see themselves as a participant. Well, really, obviously, they were not a participant. Right. Mm -hmm. They were right. taken without their will. Really their sad. innocence was robbed. Yeah. Right. So in Oregon, we have excellent statutes. I've got to say thank you, Oregon legislators, <laughs> for doing a good job 
and extending the statute of limitations both criminally and civilly. Wonderful. There's always room for improvement, but we're, we're thankful for the good, mm -hmm. solid laws. Good. So if people have questions, I mean, if they, you know, if they're a victim and they maybe don't even know where to turn, can they yes. call you and you could, you know, either be a resource or, or refer them somewhere? Yes. Yeah. So at our website, you, mm -hmm. um, that you can go to oasisoregon.org and call us. We often get calls from survivors saying, this is my situation. Do you, do you know an attorney? Do you know a therapist? Do you know where I can go? And so we love to direct people because we have some wonderful direct service organizations in the state that can really help Good. people. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Uh, I hope that the, the play is a great success and that it will that people will want to see it and that it'll you know that it'll spread around the, the state or yes. the country and maybe, you know, really get people talking about what's going on here. So That's our hope. Thank you. Thank you, yes, okay. Thanks, Tara. Thanks so much for watching this first segment of Community Hotline. And I hope you learned something today. I know I did, but stick around. We're going to be right back with the Children's Healing Art Project. So stay with us.